at Westminster and that. You look at, you know, the crown of the eyes, there's more protrusion. You know, the ears are set lower on the head than these field dogs. You know, they bob the tails where we only take one third off because you want to see that animation and all that action. It gives them so much more style than just, you know, that little bobtail on there. Now, one, one thing also I, I wondered about the, the large eyes that come with the, with the show dogs mm -hmm. and w versus the field dogs. Seem that their eyes seem to be flatter. And, and to right. me, there's a functional advantage to that. You're well, not yeah, get you're not getting tore up when every you go into this kind of stuff. Every stick know? and prior and branch right, or whatever you're right, going to get. Right. Uh, and my dog Jack had bigger eyes than, than my previous dog Harley had, and mm -hmm. he had more trouble with stuff getting into his eyes mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's on purpose. I mean, that's a, you know, the, the yeah. kind of flatter eyes. Yeah, a little flatter thing. eye, yeah. Are there yeah. other things like that that, that you know, but, that well, help, if you help look a field at, dog? Well, if you look at the muzzle, their muzzles are generally a little bit longer, which helps them with the retrieve, picking things up. Okay, okay. You know, I mean, even these little cockers will pick up huge things. I mean, I even have a picture on my website of an English cocker carrying a goose by a breast, and her name was Lucy, and she only weighed like 25 pounds. <laughs> She's carrying a goose by the breast. So, I mean, it was pretty amazing how tough some of these dogs are. You know, they're just so tough. Well, we, we want to we show these dogs in action here. What are we going to see today? Uh, well, let's just start with a few basics. Um, why don't we start out with, like, the, you read all these books and see all these videos and everything, and they say, well, you do this with a whistle, you do this with a lead, but nobody ever tells you how to do it. Okay. You know, like, this is an Acme 210 and a half whistle, and we may as well do this while we're sure, here. Sure, sure. Okay. Now, to stop, one pip. Not one pip. Sharp. To turn them either left to right, right to left... and then to bring them in just a series. You know, and you don't want to be, you have to hold the whistle in your teeth and just be real sharp with your commands because you want them to be distinct. No. You just don't want to do like, you hear a lot of guys, and a lot of other guys you'll hear, you'll hear people out there go, they sound like they're leading rats to the river. You know? <laughs> well, it's just that nobody's ever taught them how to use the whistle. Let me even have, take a half a step back. Where do I find that type of whistle? I'm not going to go to the sporting goods section at my local XYZ market um, because that's, I'm going to find a referee's whistle. You know, uh, they've got them. Uh, Lion, yeah, Cabela's has them. Lion Country Supply has okay. them. They're just, uh, I'm sure with the Internet now, just do a search for Acme 210 and a half okay. whistles. And, you know, you'll get a whole page of Acme whistles. But... I like the 210 and a half. That's what works for me. Now, that's, I mean, I'm sitting, you know, a foot from you. That doesn't sound very loud to me. Is that dog going to hear that a ways off? Is that, does that carry well? well they got a lot better hearing than we do. Okay. <laughs> Especially my, my at summer, our age now. Well, I think it's my summer allergies, too. It's affected my hearing a yeah, little bit. Yeah. But, but, well, yeah. I'm deaf in my left ear, so, you know, it's, I'm glad you're on this side. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get the dogs out. Let's, let's give it a try. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. no problem. So, Jim, we've, okay. got, uh, we've got two new people joining us on it. Well, two new uh, helpers joining us on the show here. Maybe you can yeah. introduce them. Well, I'm going to introduce the good-looking one first. This is Rock. He's a nine-month-old Springer. We've had him in for training for about a month. He belongs to uh, Don and Sharon Bettner out of uh, Fairfax, Virginia. And you can tell he's at a new spot, and he's very <laughs> curious wow. what's going on. Wow. And uh, this is Matt Zifchak. He's been helping me uh, train the dogs for a couple of years now. And he's going to work with Rock uh, on the lead. And there's Rock here. He's always got to have something in his mouth. Go, oh. There you go. Good boy. You see how Matt blew the whistle, and uh, he, uh, you know, the dog sat. Now, I mean, he's not going to be rock solid. He's just a baby yet. Now, Matt's putting the lead on, and if you look at it, uh, he like put it on, it has to look like a P, P for puppy. You always want it to be like this, P for puppy. Comes over the dog's head, that way when the dog relaxes, the lead relaxes. If you go the other way with it, just you see how it's, it's not loosening up? So you always want to have it like this. See how it loosens up automatically? The other way it doesn't, that's critical because you don't want the dog being corrected when he's not doing anything wrong. 
Now we've only been, like I said, he's only been here a month, so he's just barely getting used to us now. So go ahead, Matt, walk him on that heel a little bit. Now what Matt's going to do is he's going to do uh, figure eights, which is something you can do in your yard because it gives you both left and right turns and it gives you straightaways. What, what's the, what's the general topic that we're working on with the dog now, Jim? What's, what are we teaching the dog here? Well, you want him to walk at heel because you don't want him, number one, you don't want him jerking your arm off. And then eventually you can get him to the point where they're walking at heel off of the lead. Okay. Um, you know, you're going back to the truck, you got a bunch of birds, you know, you have, uh, you know, your gun in one hand, it's the end of the day, you're tired, you don't feel like holding the dog on the lead, and you don't want them running all over, you just tell them to heal, and they heal. Like I said, he's only nine months old, and notice he's, you know, he's not, he's pulling a little bit, but he's, it's more curiosity than jerking straight out ahead of you. And again, you see this all starts close. Matt, see if you can get him to uh, walk at heel, drop the lead though, and if he starts pulling, do the step on it with your foot. Heel. Routine. Heel. See if he'll see if he'll do it here for heel. you. Heel. Heel. Now this is how you get him to start walking. You know, he's not putting any pressure on. Well, and if he heel. starts to pull ahead of him, what Matt will do heel. is he'll just put his foot on the lead and heel. give him a little bit of a correction. Okay. But see, you can tell, uh, we just started kind of doing this with him over the last week, so. Heel. Yeah, see how he started getting a little bit ahead and. Heel. But you can tell, how, you see how he just Heel. jumped at Matt and uh, uh, like uh, that? That just tells me he wants, you Heel. know, he wants to please. It's just a matter Heel. of getting through to him. That's Attaboy. a lot tougher with a puppy in a strange area, too. Oop. You know, at nine months old. Hey, up. Go ahead, pick it back up. Now that's uh, you know that's where everything starts. Now walk along, give him, hop him, Matt. Walk along and hop him. Okay. Eventually, what you want to do also is when you're walking him on a lead, when you stop, they sit automatically. And that's why we're using a you know a puppy to show you how you get that done with a young dog. You know, having a trained dog out here. Another basic question for you, Jim. You use the word hop. At and and Heel. your voice, mm -hmm. the whistle, Heel. hand command, all all things. So you can do any of the above. Well, when you're above. when you're training a puppy, you use whatever you need to to get them to do it. Okay. Eventually, what you want to do though is when you're walking in the field, you just want to have them do it to the whistle because it's a lot easier. You've got a gun in your hand, you know. It's just you know, hey. or a water bottle or whatever. It's just <laughs> a lot easier to get them to eventually do it with the whistle. Uh, the other thing is... Uh, is there any magic to a certain command? You know, hop, that sit, stop command. Stop. The, the hop. Know, does, can it, can hop, it be... Hop, sit, whoa, okay. whatever you want to use. A lot of people will... The reason we use hop with the spaniels, it's an old English term, and it's just traditional. A lot of people will use sit because it's easier for their kids. You know, uh, it's just... Come but it means, sit and, it means sit and stay. Like, I never... Even when I train a lab... I never teach them stay, I just teach them sit. Because sit means Atta sit, boy. doesn't mean to get up and move around. Boy. Stay means the same thing. And that's like when we call the dogs, I don't use come, I just use heel. Because you have a dog, he's doing, you know, he's walking on a lead at heel, so he's out there at 20 yards, and you go heel, they know where heel is. And you go, oh. heel, heel. And as you can see, he's looking at me. Really <laughs> yeah, I got his attention. But uh, that's why we just do that. You don't, you know, the dog knows where heel is, so why use come? Why double up on your commands? Plus, you know, the only thing I can do with the word come is get louder with it, where if the dog is screwing around a little bit on you with heel, you can go, hey, heel, and kind of growl it at him, where you don't have to get loud and be yelling and screaming at the dog, that never accomplishes anything. Hey, yeah. I mean, at the most, a sharp, hey, that's about all you need with them. Now, Jim, with my dogs, I, when I, I, I use the command sit, and I, I gave them this signal for sit and that signal for stay. Mm -hmm. Was that okay? Was I goofing anything up by doing that? Not really, but it's sit means sit. Like I said, it doesn't it mean get up and move around. So, so okay. why bother teaching stay? I mean, what, what, you know, you, he was already sitting there. What was, what were you accomplishing by telling him to stay? Okay. 
I mean, if you tell him to sit, even though you walk away, he should still stay there because you didn't give him any other commands. Okay. So that's just the way. Uh, that's just the way I do it. You know, simplify it. You know, you don't need seventy-five commands for a dog. You know, at least I don't. I don't feel that you do. With just with just the basics, what's going to be the next step now? Um, now that we're getting the next step would be walking him uh, at heel off a lead. And we I got another young dog here that eh, might do it. Okay. I didn't bring any trained dogs today because I knew we were going through basics, and I thought it'd be more important for you to see what happens if a dog screws up, rather than just what a trained dog. You know, everybody knows a trained dog is going to sit. Everybody knows a trained dog is going to walk on a lead. Yeah, that uh, you know, show you what puppies are going to do. That's the sure. What the biggest thing is, I mean, the finished product doesn't do somebody that's training at home any good. Showing them the finished product. So, but we can get. Uh, like I said, I have another young one that let's, will probably walk at heel. Let's try that next step then. Yeah, we can try that next. Hi everybody, uh, this is Burr. She's a little English cocker. She's about two years old. And I'm going to show you what I meant by uh, eventually getting them to walk at heel without a lead. Oh, Burr, heel, 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 heel. Hey, hey, heel, heel. We've only had her a couple of months. So she's... And I really don't mind them changing sides like this as long as they don't... Uh, the, as long as they don't go hunting on their own, hey, like this, here, here, hey, hey, here, 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 right here, right here, come on, up. So that's what I wanted to show you is, you know, what happens, you know, if a dog screws up. You stop, you bring them back. You, they don't need much correction because, like her, she knows better. She's just being a little evil and trying to see what she can get away with. Pay attention now. Heel. Hey, 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 heel, hey, uh, uh, here, right here, no, right here, but this is the kind of stuff you deal with with puppies every day, and that's why, you know, I brought these young dogs is to show you, you know, what to do, and that stop command see the importance of that once you get them here and then you just at that point once you get them stopped we spend a lot of time teaching the dog patience once you like she shouldn't be moving right now hop hop This is where the patience comes in. See, I gave her a slight correction. She, she just showed you, she knows what she's doing and she knows she did wrong. You know, when a dog does that at that point, they kind of put themselves in jeopardy because there's no doubt in your mind that they know what they're supposed to do and when they don't do it, they're just trying to see what they can get away with. The other thing I do a lot with young dogs is, and I'll show you that right now. Get out. See how she turned? No, no, no. As most of the time, once I stop them at this, you know, seven, eight yards or whatever it is, when they're puppies like this, I try not to call them to me because that gets in their head that they're allowed to move once I stop them. Normally what I do is when I stop them, I go to them and release them. No, no, no. See, she's a little being a little monkey today because she knows better than that. Down, up. 